morning everyone welcome back to crumbs and corkscrews where i lou the dessert obsessed baker are going to show you how to create the most deliciously easy dessert cakes bakes all sorts lots of different things so if you're joining me on the facebook page drop a comment say hello um, let me know where you're joining from and if you're joining me on youtube then also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the little bell for notifications for next time i go live and today's session is kitchen live if you're joining for the first time this is where i will go through one of the recipes and we'll we'll take some time and we'll create it and we'll walk through and we'll talk about the ingredients and the equipment as we make it and then I'll pop it in the oven and I'll share everything with you guys on the site as well. Um, if you are new for the first moment or so, we have a couple of minutes, just a minute or so to get people in, get yourself comfy, grab your coffee. If you're still in your PJs, that's fine. It's Sunday morning. That's what they're made for. Um, and yeah, I, I can't wait to get stuck in. It's been a couple of weeks, actually. It feels like such a long time since I last did a Kitchen Live, but it's only about two, maybe three weeks. We were doing them on a Wednesday evening, but we're back now as we go into autumn or fall and on the countdown to the magical C word. <laughs> uh, we'll be back here on Sunday mornings and pretty much all the way through, ah, from now, the beginning of September, through till... Uh -huh, that day in December um, and we'll be sort of going through some autumn recipes, some fall recipes, some Halloween recipes, um, maybe we'll look at some Thanksgiving recipes for you guys on the other side of the Atlantic and also yeah we're going to be doing a lot of Christmas ones as well. Um, so, but this morning we're going to be talking about, as it says, a, and we're going to be making a coffee tray bake cake. So it's telling me to get stuck in. So, so let's go. Oh dear. I, well, I've got all my notes and my, my, my thing for changing the screens and the mouse and my coffee. Um, it's just been, it's been a whirlwind of a couple of weeks to be quite honest. And I, I just needed to, you know, we had a lot of family things going on, so I just needed to take some time, develop a few new recipes, and then come back. So I'm really sort of pleased that you guys are back with us on a Sunday morning. I'm really excited. I've got some really lovely recipes to go through that have been developing, and lots of Christmas ones. I must admit, I'm really excited for the Christmas ones. Yes. I won't go too much into that because <laughs> I know some people are not ready to hear about that word yet. <laughs> but this morning, as I say, we're going to be looking at a coffee tray bake cake. Now, I've been asked to do this and the lovely Gina who joins us as well on my kitchen lives has asked for a coffee cake. And I did one last Christmas, but we did it as a Rudolph cake, a reindeer cake. And I haven't actually just looked and gone, let's just do a basic coffee cake. And I thought, you know what? For the first one back, I really fancy a good, nice, warming coffee cake with that lovely, creamy, slightly chocolatey cappuccino frosting, buttercream on the top. And so that's what we're going for. So it's a really easy bake to get us back in. And also it's it's sort of becoming that time of year where you want something a bit like coffee, where we're going into the caramels and the pumpkin spice and the toffee and the apples and all sorts of things. So coffee works really well for this time of year. Um, and as usual, I'm going to run through a quick overview of what we're going to do. I keep forgetting I've moved it to that side. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go for a quick run through of what we're going to be doing and then I'll talk you through the ingredients and the equipment that we're going to use and then we'll get stuck in. But as usual, if you've got any comments, any questions, you want to say hi, give a shout out to anyone, just drop it in the comments, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. And uh, I see them as they come up. So if you see me looking across, it's because I'm looking at the laptop. <laughs> right. I'm going to just have a a quick sip of that, but then let's get that out of the way. So, coffee tray bake, and it's like a sheet cake if you're if you're more familiar with that, but a tray bake cake. So it's a single layer cake, really moist, really sort of soft and tender. 
And we're going to then be covering it with this lovely, luscious layer of buttercream frosting. Now, this here is my chocolate cake one, but it's going to be very similar to that. It's not going to be as dark. And you can decorate this however you want. It's really good for quick, easy cakes that you can take, frost, decorate in the pan and take to um, a gathering, you know, a celebration, whatever. And as we're all getting back and meeting people, perfect opportunity. It's also good for morning coffee as well, morning coffee and tea treats. So this cake is going to make, depending on how you cut it, about 18 to 24 slices. And this is what I say, it's, it's a real classic on that sort of layer cake cake. Now, normally coffee cake has walnuts in it. I have a nut allergy, so we're skipping out the walnuts. But if you want to put walnuts in this recipe, by all means, you can do. And we'll talk about add-ins when we get into the recipe itself. And I say, because it's a single layer, you get that really nice, soft and fluffy melt-in-your-mouth cake texture, which is perfect. And that's really what we're looking for here. I say it is really quick and easy. It's a good one to get the kids involved with as well, because we're going to be mixing bits and pieces up. But with this version, what we're going to do, instead of creaming our butter and our sugar first, we're going to be using a reverse creaming method. So we're going to start with our dry ingredients and gradually introduce our wet. And then we'll run through, whilst it's in the oven baking, I'll run through a very quick and easy, smooth and creamy cappuccino frosting. And then after that, I'll pop it all together, um, probably off camera, because it needs to cool. Although it smells delicious and you want to get stuck in, you have to let this bad boy cool before you frost it. Right then, let's talk about ingredients. So it does look a long list, but don't panic. It's Really, as with all my recipes, it's really simple ingredients. And you've probably got most of them in the cupboard. If not, there are substitutions you can make. But this is an egg-based recipe. So I've been getting a lot of questions recently about eggless recipes. Now, for me, I don't need to, for dietary or health reasons, admit eggs from my diet or food preferences. So this is an eggless, uh, this is an egg recipe. Um, I will pop in the full post where you can find um, further information about eggless baking and Gemma at Bigger Boulder Baking, who's this amazing YouTuber, fantastic professional chef, has a whole section on eggless baking. And I sort of that's who I recommend you go to, as well as a couple of specific um, eggless bakers. But this has got eggs in it. So let's talk about our ingredients then. We're going to start off with some self-raising flour. This is 350 grams. Self-raising flour is something specific. I think you can get it quite sort of globally, but it's very common specifically used in the UK. This is just a plain or all-purpose flour, but it has our baking, our raising agents already added. So like our baking powder and baking soda. So I'm using that today because I have a lot of this that I need to get through. But in the recipe, and I will pop in the substitutions for plain flour and how much raising agent you need. So we're using self-raising flour, 350 grams of that. We are, however, going to be popping in an extra teaspoon of baking powder. That's just to give it a little bit of a lighter lift, give it that nice, fluffy, airy, melt-in-your-mouth texture. So that's our extra baking powder. We're also using brown, light brown sugar. Now, I've popped just full light brown sugar in the ingredients here, but then when I was getting everything ready this morning, I thought, actually, I quite like to mix it up. So I'm using a soft light brown sugar, or you can use a light brown uh, soft muscovado. Um, normally, I'd use a full 300 grams of this, but I've split this. So I'm using 200 grams of the soft light brown sugar, and I'm adding in... 100 grams of the white um, caster sugar, or you might hear it called super fine sugar. So that's our sugars. So we're also going to be using butter, obviously. <laughs> and we've got 250 grams of unsalted butter here. You can use slightly salted if you prefer. With the unsalted butter, we're going to add a pinch of salt into um, that, just a teaspoon of that. And the salt helps bring out the creaminess of the butter and enhances all the flavors. 
But if you prefer not to, you can leave that out. Um, I've already mixed that in with my baking powder, so it's ready to go. Now, whereas most of the sponge cakes, we have equal quantities of butter, sugar, flour. This, as you'll notice, doesn't have as much butter as the others. It's because we're going to be adding an extra sort of different type of fat. And we're going to be using natural yogurt. 150 grams of the natural yogurt here or you can use sour cream and again that just helps keep it really lovely and moist and nice and tender so we're using that and then for the coffee element we've got instant coffee two tablespoons of instant coffee we're going to be making this up into a paste but you can also use coffee extract um, and you can get various different ones. But this is the Nielsen Massey, the coffee extract. This is amazing. It smells fantastic. Um, and I'll be using actually that within the buttercream, the cappuccino buttercream instead. But for the cake, we're going to be using two tablespoons of instant coffee just made into a paste. So it's quite strong. You can use um, things like coffee essences, like um, the camp coffee, the hickory one, if you prefer. But for that really nice, smooth, roasted, but not overpowering coffee uh, flavor that we want here, I'm using instant and like I said, we've also got four eggs. And these are four medium eggs. They've been out the fridge. They've come up to room temperature. And that's really key. If you do store your eggs in the fridge or the chiller or somewhere nice and cool, is that you bring them up to room temperature before you get baking. Um, it helps them whisk up those protein stretch and everything, which helps with our, again, with our nice, light, fluffy texture of our cake. That's what we're looking for. So that's our ingredients. Oh, don't crack that. In terms of equipment wise, then you're going, we're, we're making a sheet cake, a, a, layer, a tray bake. So you're going to need a sheet pan. Um, this is a 13 by 9 non stick one. I love this. It's a masterclass one. I got this off Amazon. Um, I actually don't line this one because it's so good. Um, I will just put a little bit of cake release in there to help. But um, I love this one. But with your tray bake cakes, you want to make sure they're at least an inch deep and that's perfect it gives our cake that nice support and rise um, uh, as it rises um, in the pan and also if you're then just going to frost it in this and take it off wherever you're going it's, an, it's, it's nice try not to use glass um, pyrex or ceramic dishes because they don't get an even bake through the cake um, as much so um, yeah we're using a 13 by 9 sheet pan you can use a slightly smaller deeper one if you prefer uh, I'm going to be using the KitchenAid today you could see it earlier it's gone um, oh, we've got a little bit of thing I'm going to use the KitchenAid trusty KitchenAid today but you can use a large bowl get a, a nice big bowl helps incorporate that air into it or a hand held mixer if you prefer i'm just haven't used the kitchen aid for a little while so i thought we'll get that out today <laughs> we'll try that you could do this in a stand mixer if you want you can also do it by hand with a balloon whisk as well just that's where you need your arm muscles <laughs> so yeah we'll be using the kitchen aid like i say if you are using and not using a non-stick pan or you know that your pans aren't as good as you like them to be you can line this with baking parchment as well like I say, I'm not going to with this because I love this pan. I don't need to. And then, as always, grab yourself a load of utensils, some spatulas, spoons are always good, and some palette knives and uh, my trusty angled palette knife, which we'll talk about later as well. So that's your equipment. Let's just move that away. And your ingredients. So let's go back. I'm just going to grab a... A sip of coffee. Right. Actually, I've got to put that somewhere I'm not going to spill it. Okay, then. So let's get into our recipe now. So I'm going to preheat the oven a little bit further in because we're going to be walking through this. So it takes a little bit more time. But if you're if you're doing this at home, start off and preheat your oven to about 180 degrees C or 350 Fahrenheit. By the time you've got everything together and your pan sorted, it'll be nicely up to temperature. 
Uh, but I'll turn mine on a little later. Um, right, let's bring this across. I've got a real tickle now, just come up in my throat. Deary me. <laughs> As I say, it's been a little while. It's been, it's been a couple of weeks, but it feels like forever. So I've got my notes down here and I'm like, ah, do I know what I'm doing? <laughs> I think I do. Anyway, like I say, we're going to be making this using the reverse creaming method, which means that we're going to start off with our dry ingredients first. And we're going to combine all of them and then slowly add our wet ingredients, starting with our fats. And what it does is it helps with a tray bake cake to keep that sort of um, structure really nice and moist and tender because what happens and stops it becoming over puffy, the once we've mixed our dry ingredients together and we add the butter in, what happens is those sort of gluten molecules get coated by the fat of the butter, which gives a really nice even distribution of that rather than creaming first and then putting our dry in. And it means that because we're doing a large sheet cake, it just gives an even coating throughout, which means that when we bake it, we get that nice light um, uh, melting your mouth texture but actually and it's quite springy but it's not going to crumble and fall apart because everything sort of binds together so for verse revert for the reverse creaming method <laughs> start with your flour so this is our 300 and oh all our flour in there today so that's our 350 grams of self-raising flour. We've also then got our baking powder, one teaspoon of baking powder to add in. And in there was a teaspoon of salt because I'm using unsalted butter. Let's just pop some empty bowls out of the way. And all I'm going to do then, you can do this by hand, like I said, is I'm just going to pop it on and mix it through. This just helps the... Uh, baking powder and the salt evenly distribute throughout your um, throughout your flour. So just a quick mix. This self-raising flour I've got is new on, and it's so fine. It's it's really finely ground. So I'm gonna. This is gonna be nice for adding in later. Give us a nice texture. Let's just bash that off there. Then um, next up is our sugars. So like I say, the ingredients list states 300 grams of soft light brown sugar. But this morning I thought, actually, I do want to mix it up. And I sometimes do that, especially when I'm making things like brownies or chocolate cake or things where I'm using the the, the brown sugars, the muscovado sugars as well, because they're quite a nice caramelly, sort of, they've got a really nice caramelly flavour, gives an extra depth to the flavour of the cake. But they're also a lot softer and they're a lot more moister. Moister? If they're, <laughs> they're more moist. So they do retain a lot. They, they really do help keep our cake nice and, and, and soft and light. Um, but... I didn't want to have too much in there, and I do normally make this just all with brown sugar, but I thought I want to have a little bit of a balance this morning. So I split this out. So we've got 200 grams of soft light brown and 100 grams of white caster or super fine sugar. So I'm just going to add that in first. I'm going to keep that from my thing. Now, with brown sugars as well, you'll probably find that when you take it out of the packet that, like I say, it's nice and soft and moist, and it retains that nice sugar it's, is hydroscopic. It's what helps keep our cakes moist. But you'll find that the sugar might clump together. So just give it a quick sort of dab over with a spoon or a spatula to break up any large lumps. And that's just going to help everything mix through really, really well. Let's just do that. I just realised we're meant to be having a heat wave. It's meant to be like something really high today and for the next couple of days. But it's grey and dark out there this morning. <laughs> Sent Ian out on his bike as usual. I didn't send him out. He chose to go out on his bike. I just <laughs> don't want to reiterate. So I've just prodded it over my sugar there before I add it in so I get rid of most of the lumps. 
Let's just get rid of some of these bowls. And once again, just going to mix that through so you get a nice even distribution. There we go. You could use golden caster sugar if you want to as well, which um, instead of the white, um, again, it gives you a slightly more caramelly um, flavor. Right, so we have our, all our dry ingredients are in now. So now we're going to start adding our wet. And the first thing we're going to do is our butter. And this is like we're saying, this is now going to go into here and it's going to mix all together. It's going to become quite like a sandy texture. Um, and that's just the, the butter is binding to the gluten molecules in the flour and making sure that everything's nice and evenly coated for that really lovely texture. So as always, you want to start off with room temperature soft butter. I'm just going to pop this in and then we'll, we'll talk about it just as it's spinning through. Um, I've got 250 grams here. And that's because you don't want to be sort of trying to mash your butter in as well. Um, it's a lot softer. It will give you a nicer texture as well. Let's just get that on. Oh, told you this flour was floury. <laughs> It's a bit like icing sugar is everywhere this morning. I'm just going to get rid of that. So, yes, um, room temperature butter, softened butter. Not butter that you've popped in the microwave or anything like that. When you press your finger in, it should just be indenting. It shouldn't go all the way through. If it goes all the way through, the oil is, the, the fats and the oil have already started to come out of the butter. And it will just be, give you a really greasy texture. But you want this softened butter. So like I say, so when you put your finger in, it just makes a dent. You don't push your finger all the way in. If it's too cold, when you um, when you add it in, you're going to be trying to work that butter first into the flour um, and those gluten molecules, and you're just going to then start overworking that, and you'll get quite a dense um, texture to your cake. So with any cake, um, always start with room temperature butter. So I just lift that up so it doesn't go everywhere. And as you can see, this is quite, it's quite crumbly on the, um, on the beta blade there. And that didn't take long at all. Oh, there's a few bits. I can just show you this. I probably actually can't show you because of the camera, but it's quite, it feels like if you were making pastry, um, it's the same sort of texture there. So let's just... But we don't want it to, we're going to start adding some more wet ingredients now. So let's just pull that in. Then next up, we go, as I say, I keep looking at my um, notes because it's been a while. We're going to be adding in our coffee and our yogurt. So we're going to start off just by making this coffee into a paste. And you don't need a lot of water to do that. You just need, I'm just gonna take it straight out of the cold tap. Actually, I'll put it in a jug. So this is our two tablespoons of instant coffee. And I'm just gonna add, we want to make it into a paste. So adding a teaspoon, tablespoon so of water. And make sure when you do this that you make sure all those coffee granules um, of the instant coffee are dissolved because they can be really quite bitter, especially if you get one in your cake batter because they won't cook out. So there we go. I'm just giving it a... A hand through there. You can also, and I have done in the past, brew a like uh, an espresso shot 
um, and allow it to cool like the Nespresso capsules. We do that sometimes, but for this, we're just going because we want a really good coffee flavor. We're just going to use this instant coffee. And it's nothing fancy. It's just good old gold blend. <laughs> right. There we go. That's enough. We don't need that. So we're going to be adding then in our coffee paste and half of our yogurt. So start off with the yogurt. And we do it in just in two halves just to give it a chance to incorporate nicely. Um, and then in goes our... Oh, I've just got some coffee granules there that haven't gone through. So There we go. I'm just going to pop that there for a moment. And then, again, mix this... Up. and it's quite a thick mixture to start with because obviously we haven't added our eggs and that's where we're going to really get our everything come together so and I'm not going on high it's like medium to low so I don't want to overwork that gluten like we've said already Oop. you can see it's quite a thick it's almost like a cookie dough texture at the moment our cake batter which is different. Normally by this point, it's quite wet and smooth, but don't worry, I've got coffee dribbling down the side there. And then in with the last of our yogurt. This is natural yogurt, 150 grams of natural yogurt, or you can use sour cream. Sour cream works really nicely with the coffee as well. Just takes off any slight bitterness you may have. Canon still haven't come out with a, a way to do that. <laughs> I'm just going to make sure I get everything scraped out there. use the yogurt spoon just make sure we've got everything off Oops. just got a little coffee ring <laughs> and then back on it goes and now when you put the last of the yogurt in it will start to get softer um, and more cake texture wise like So I'm just going to give that a, a little whisk up and then we'll give it a scrape down before we start adding the eggs. There we go. Smells great. It smells so good. Let's just make sure we get everything off the other side as well. Give it a really good scrape down because we want to get everything in there. I'm just going to scrape down the bowl before we add our eggs in. So this is our coffee mixture so far. Looks good, smells good. Doesn't overly smell of coffee. If you want a stronger cake, you by all means, you can add an extra tablespoon of coffee into that instant coffee mix. And like I said, you can use the coffee extract. This is the Nielsen Massey one. You'll probably only need a couple of teaspoons, if that. Um, and it will give you a really intense coffee flavor. I'm going to be using that for the buttercream. Um, and we'll talk about those ingredients when we get there. <laughs> so in with our eggs now. These are four room temperature eggs. Now, if you haven't got them up to room temperature by this point, what or you, you forgot to get them to room temperature what you can do is just get a bowl um, of warm straight out the tap tap water and pop the eggs in there for about 10 minutes and they will help come the, bring them up to temperature so what we're doing is we're just popping them in one at a time 
because if we put them in all together, it'll get really wet too quickly. And we want to combine everything nicely. So one at a time, a good mix through. And we'll scrape down after the second one. There we go. I can't wait to get stuck into this later. <laughs> oh, right. Let's just give this a quick scrape down. As you can see, it's a lot more smoother, more cake batter like that we know now. Um, and it's all coming together. So I'm just going to smooth that down the sides. Make sure you've got everything together. And the other beauty of doing this way is it means you... Not only, I really like this way, but there's, there's moments for using a reverse creaming method and then other sort of traditional creaming methods. But it means you don't end up with any pockets of flour in the bottom when you know when you're trying to get your flour in um, after you've... This one doesn't want to crack. This one after you've added your, your eggs and you've creamed your butter and your sugar. This one means you, you... Because you start with it and you do that adding the, the butter to it so everything... It's coated. It's just that it's just a really nice way of making sure everything's really well combined as well. For things like a Victoria sponge or a layer cake, where you want something that's really nice and light and fluffy for when you cut into it, um, I'd stick to a normal creaming method. This reverse creaming method, I love for layer bakes, uh, layer tray bake cakes. It just gives that structure but helps retain the moisture and the softness so that's our last egg in let's get rid of the shells sip of coffee and there we go right so this is our lovely amazing chocolate uh, coffee cake batter there and as you can see we've done that reverse creaming method adding the eggs in last so you've got a nice smooth mixture i'm just gonna we don't need this anymore so let's give it a good oh it smells so good we use the light brown sugar you can use a dark brown sugar if you prefer but it will give you a deeper, more intense, caramelly, sort of slightly bitter flavour, which goes well with the, the coffee cake, the, the bitterness of the coffee, um, especially then when we add our cappuccino frosting. But I think the light brown sugar is better for this, if I am genuinely <laughs> honest about it. So let's just give it a scrape round, get everything there. And I'm just going to show you. See, it. that's our coffee cake mixture. It's really nice and light, just like a normal cake mixture. Obviously, we did it the other way around. So, I'm trying not to take my hands off with the KitchenAid. Just a quick wipe down. So before we pop this in then to the tray, I am going to um, preheat my oven. So that's 180 degrees, 350 Fahrenheit. Um, let's go. Yep. So that will preheat. This one doesn't take that long to preheat either. So that's good. But if you're doing this at home, preheat the oven before you get to the, the first thing you do, preheat the oven, because we've taken some time getting here. So then with our cake pan, now, like I said, depending on what pan you guys have, you might prefer to have a, uh, you, you might have one that isn't as nonstick. This is a masterclass one. I had this. I only use it for my tray bakes as well, <laughs> my sheet cake. So I know it's it's perfect. But this is really sort of quite heavy duty, um, uh, non-stick. I've got coffee all over my fingers. <laughs> so I know with this, I can just um, use a little bit of cake release. 
uh, across the bottom and the sides and obviously in the corners. But if you're not uh, entirely 100% confident with your tray, then align it with baking parchment. And like we do with the brownies and the blondies and the tray bakes like that, line it with a layer sort of across, which overhangs a little and a layer this way. So you've got two sheets and you can then just lift your cake out at the end. Um, I'm going to be using, I need to make a new part of this. This is our homemade cake release uh, and the, the recipe is up on the site. This has lasted me. Um, this is a, a second batch. This was six months and the other one was six months. Um, and this was just made from oil and flour and some vegetable shortening like tracks. Um, and it's so uh, cost effective. I need to get a new pot because the seal keeps dropping off here. And I'm going to pop some just all over. You don't want a thick layer because you don't want it to to the cake too much. But corners are the main things and your sides. And this is just a silicon pastry brush getting it across. Now, I've got my butter wrapper here as well and if you are comfortable with your pan or you want to actually just help your paper stick down or you want to grease add a little bit extra to your um parchment paper i don't know who else um who's else's granny used to do this but let's get rid of that save the the butter wrapper because actually, even though you think you've scraped everything off, this is a gold mine for greasing. And it's great just for helping things sit in the pan or giving an extra little bit of grease to it. I use that when I'm doing my uh, flapjacks that we did the other week. So it's an extra buttery flavor to it. Um, if you don't have any need for it at the moment, just pop it in the fridge. I've got a couple in the fridge, just pop it in the fridge and then grab it out when you need to. And you'll always have something just to do a quick grease um, of, um, of your pans. And this cake release, it's just, you can buy the sprays, you can buy the, the gloop, um, but, you know, you pay nine, ten pounds here in the UK for uh, a, a tub of gloop um, or five pound or so in the UK for a spray, if not more. Um, and they don't last as long um, and things. But this was, you've got your flour, it's just vegetable oil, and then the tracks, the vegetable shortening. And then what I do is whatever that, I don't use that, I pop in the freezer. So I buy a block for like 90p a pound, um, and you only need a little bit. So you can get loads and loads out of it for... And then your oil and your flour, it's a, a, a couple of quid, if that, and it'll last you for ages. You make this up, you whisk it all together, you make it up, and you pop it in the container, you can keep it in the fridge or in the cupboard if it's nice and cool, and it lasts for ages. And I say I've made two of these pots in the last 12 months. This start, this start date was the 2nd of August last year. I've made this pot up twice, so it's lasted really well, and it's great. And because you just make it in your pot, you know, you've got no extra rubbish. <laughs> anyway, you can find the recipe for that on the blog and all the information about it. And I will link it down in the comments as well. So I have my re cake released, cake greased, cake uh, gloop baking uh, sheet pan. Made sure I've got it all in the corners. But as you can see, I've given it a good coating, but I haven't gone thick. I don't want to be baking that cake release as well. My oven is coming up to temperature really nicely. So when we're all ready, just then add in your cake batter. Pile it all in the middle. Oh, it smells so good. I love coffee cake and the things I don't make enough of it. And when I used to make the coffee cupcakes for the shop, they used to sell really well. And it's one of them things we, when we think around making a cake, we, we tend to make 
sweeter ones. Coffee cake tends to be more of that snacky sort of cake. Ooh. I'm just going to pop that in the sink because I'm going to have to wash that up because we need it for our buttercream. So when you've got your cake in, you need to obviously spread it out. Now we're going to be using a spatula. You can use just a regular, you see that? Regular flat spatula, use a big one. This is a little one. Or you can use, see if you can see it, my a trusty angled spatula. I love these for everything from tray bakes to cheesecakes to anything icing. It's got this crank in the handle, which means you can get in and give a really nice layer without having to try and get your hand down there and dragging your knuckles through it and everything. <laughs> so you get a little bit of extra leverage without sort of getting yourself covered in your batter or your frosting or your cheesecake filling. So we just use it to move it around. Oh, I can't. I really, I'm so excited about this. And I'm meant to be being good again. <laughs> this is Camilla has said <laughs> she would like this if I would deliver it to her. Camilla, I'm afraid it's, I said I'm going to have to prize it out of my husband's hand. I might have to prize it out of my hands <laughs> before I deliver this to anyone. Oh. Uh. If anybody is local, um, there's so many. Um, I hadn't been into Siren, Sester, for, well, since uh, pandemic, and I had to go in for the haircut and uh, an optician's appointment. And there's a few new lovely little bakeries springing up. It's uh, really quite exciting. And it's, it's 11 years since I opened the shop. And what the way things have moved on and... and things and people I mean that when I started it was people were really just getting into bake off and the love of baking and and all of that sort of stuff but now everywhere is amazing I saw cues the other day and I was like oh I mean I have cues <laughs> but it's like it's so nice to sort of see it all again and town thriving anyway my oven is up to temperature and as you can see my cake is now really nice and lovely and level, which means when it rises, I should get a nice, lovely level cake. Um, if you are sort of, I've got a good centimetre between the, the lip of my pan and my batter mix, but if, it, if you're quite close, or you think your cake is going to overflow, then pop this onto a baking sheet before you, <laughs> when you're putting them in, because the last thing you want is it for all to go over the sides and they're all over the bottom of your oven, because that's a nightmare to clean. So I'm going to pop this in. I'm quite happy that this is going to be as fine as it is. So let's get my oven gloves. I love this oven. It's so quiet. And then this is going to bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. Oh, sorry, 25 to 30 minutes. So I'm going to start off at 25. I'm going to come back over and say that to you so you can see it. So that's going to bake for about 20 to, uh, 25 to 30 minutes at 180 degrees C, 350 Fahrenheit. I've put it on for 25 minutes. I'm going to want to check it then and see how it is. Uh, and when we check it, obviously you, use, you can use the, the toothpick or the skewer test where we test the middle and it should come out, shouldn't come out covered in crumbs, it should come out clean. And there might be one or two crumbs on that. If it comes out really crummy, it's gonna be quite a dry cake. So you just want to get that nice texture there. Um, and if it isn't quite ready then, then I'll pop it on for another few minutes, another five minutes, and then test again. Also, the spring test. So when you press down with your fingers, it should spring back up. It should feel spongy, but it shouldn't say stay indented. It should spring back nicely up. Right. So I'm just going to clean a few things up. And we're going to, well, mainly get the... Kitchen aid. Um, what's that thing? Oh, <laughs> washed up. So we've got that for our buttercream. 
that's just you might you guys don't mind watching me just wash up for a moment do you <laughs> i keep saying to myself i need to i need to get a second kitchen aid bowl but they're really expensive so i keep saying to myself i think i should just get a second kitchen aid and then i think no louise that's just that's just silly you don't need to <laughs> But there's some really good offers on them at the moment. If you go onto Amazon or uh, Lakeland here in the UK, and especially as we get to later in the year for the magical C word. But also things like the Kenwood K-Mix is really reasonable on price. Um, if you're looking for a stand mixer, um, and it's... <laughs> is a really, really good nifty mixer, actually. Kenwood's, if I hadn't uh, had this, I'd uh, stick with a Kenwood. So, um, right. <laughs> so I'm just gonna pop our ingredients list back up for a moment. Grab a sip of coffee. You didn't need to hear me slurping, I apologize. And we're going to grab our ingredients up now. Oh, I can't wait to get that out of the oven. It looks like it's going to be a really good one. Okay, so ingredients-wise then, it is really, really simple. Once again, we're using unsalted butter at room temperature. So it's soft. Remember, I said it's soft, you can push down, but your finger isn't going all the way through. So that's our butter. We're also going to be using um, icing sugar or powdered sugar. Um, I've got this in the bag. I haven't weighed it out because it just goes everywhere, but so I'll be weighing that as we go. We want 400 grams of that. And then also I've suggested here to use one tablespoon of instant coffee. And again, do that as we did where we mix it into a paste. Uh, but I'm going to be using actually for this our coffee extract. Because we want to be, it's a cappuccino frosting, so it's a lot of a stronger coffee flavor. Um, but we're going to mellow that out with the butter and the icing sugar. So I'm going to be using the coffee extract. <clears throat> and one thing that I forgot to put on here last night, um, and I when I was doing the, the overlays and I remembered this morning is cream. Now, I had double cream in the fridge, ready for this, that I had some leftover and I've gone in this morning and Ian has eaten it all. Um, so, but I had some clotted cream leftover. Now, this isn't ideal. What I wanted to use was a double or a heavy cream, but actually I've got a little bit of clotted cream. So I've got 100 mils of clotted cream, which I've got leftover. So that's going in. So it's going to be quite a rich um, uh, frosting, but that's sort of that milky steamed coffee, that steamed milk frothiness of the cappuccino. And then we'll be dusting um, over at the end with our um, with some cocoa powder. Equipment wise, again, all you're going to need is your handheld mixer or your stand mixer. We are obviously using our stand mixer, the kitchen aid for this, but we're just going to be all doing it one. And if you have a stand mixer, I really highly recommend doing your buttercream in this. So first up, then we're going to take our butter. So that's 200 grams of unsalted, softened room temperature butter. I'm just going to pop that in there. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to whisk this up. We're just going to let it do its own thing for a little while. Just give it time to whisk. And what happens is our butter will get nice and pale and fluffy. But a bit like when we're whisking eggs. Now, believe it or not, as you do this, you're going to incorporate air into the butter. And it just helps give us that nice, really light, sort of buttercream frosting that we're after we don't want a heavy dense one on top of our nice and light soft and fluffy cake so start off um slowly and then whisk it up and then we're doing everything on the stand mixer with the balloon whisk if you're using a handheld mixer then just the regular beaters are perfectly fine and it you'll think it's sort of going you'll be like mm. it's a bit wet buttery uh, I thought you told me not to do that, have my butter like that, because it'll get greasy. 
Yes, we are sort of doing, but because it hasn't got to the point where it's too melted and the fats and the oils are separating out, this is just going to whip into, looks actually quite like a really thick cream. So I'm just going to take that up a little bit further. And then we just sort of let it do its thing just for a moment. And then doing this, I know it sounds a pain of whipping your butter first for your buttercream, but it does make a really lovely light frosting. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to work with as well. So I'm just going to show you. And it all got pale. So let's go ah, there's my spatula so our original butter was quite yellow but as you do this it'll pale up and like i say see i told you it's like a thick cream there's no effort in there whatsoever um it's this nice light buttery nuts and it doesn't it doesn't feel thick or stiff it feels quite smooth and lovely so i don't want to do that I just want to scrape the butter off my spatula. So next thing we're going to do then is we're going to start adding in our icing sugar or our powdered sugar. Now you'll see I've taken off the thing here. Oops. Come on. I don't want any dropping out. <laughs> so with this then... Um, I have a love-hate relationship with icing sugar. Um, it's, I think it's every baker's nemesis. It gets everywhere. And this is all, I've already been through this bag and sifted it. So you might want to sift it um, if you find it's clumpy. Otherwise, um, just sort of add it in. Now, do this in stages. I'd normally say do a tea tablespoon at a time if you've got the time. Uh, but we've got 400 grams to get through. So I'm just going to be adding it in 100 grams at a time. Nope, that, didn't, that wasn't enough. And I'm doing it like this because what I'm going to do also is fold this through let's leave that in there i'm gonna fold this through with the spatula before i put it onto the whisk on back onto the kitchen aid purely because it will just go everywhere give it a scrape down so you've got everything in and on and that's also why we whisk that butter first, because it's nice and soft. We're not having to force the butter into the icing sugar and force that combination of everything. By having the nice soft butter, it's a lot easier to work with. So let's give it a quick whisk up. morning i feel like it's been i've been on a little bit of a roll ian will be home shortly and he'll want in and i'm, I'm like i haven't finished yet so you just have to wait <laughs> so as you can see this is already starting to take the form of our frosting so i'm going to go in with another 100 grams And again, once again with our spatula, just, I'm not trying to mix it in. I'm just trying to fold it so that when I turn the whisk on, I don't get the inevitable cloud of frosting, of icing sugar coming up in my face. So after this one, we're going to add some, uh, when we add the next batch of icing sugar, we'll be adding some of the cream. Because it's going to start getting stiffer now because we're adding the icing sugar into the butter. 
So help with the cream, we'll start incorporating that now, which will help keep it nice and smooth and soft. So let's just whisk that up a little bit more. And lastly, we'll add the coffee. Okay. So that's 200 grams in now. You can see it's, and it's, there's no effort needed in this. It's nice and soft and smooth. And that's what we're looking for, especially when we're going to uh, start decorating our cake as well. So I'm just going to give it a scrape down. You might find that your icing sugar sticks to the side. So just give it a scrape down as well. And it's, that's really helpful. So next up, I'm going to go in first with half of my cream. So this would normally be about 100 mils of double or heavy cream. Uh, well, you, like I say, I haven't got any left, so I'm using clotted cream. And then I'm just going to zero that and add another 100 grams of my icing sugar in there that cake I don't, you don't know if you can see it but that cake has got a really lovely big pillowy rise to it and don't panic it will shrink back obviously as it cools down later so in here this is our third lot of icing sugar with half of our cream ah oh, good morning gina how are you i'm making your favorite coffee cake <laughs> I hope you're keeping well. So, I'm just going to whiz through the buttercream, sort of the icing sugar through there again. Pop it on. So, that's got half of our cream now and half of our, and the, another 100 grams of icing sugar. So, we're just going to whisk that through. And then lastly, we'll add oh. It's almost like a timer when it does that. Okay. Just going to take it up to one more notch on there. And say, so if you're doing this a handheld mixer, give it a really good whisk and then maybe give it a stop and a scrape down, um, especially if you're sort of hands-wise. So, last bit. Another scrape down, get all the icing sugar in. And then we're going to go in. Put that in there with the last of the cream. And if you don't want to add cream into this, by all means, you don't have to. I just like it for that extra sort of cappuccino-y vibe. Scrape that all down. Let's get rid of that. And we'll zero our thing. And then the last 100 grams of icing sugar in we go. Now, if you, this is going to give us a really nice layer of frosting on top of our cake. If you don't want to have this much, then you can easily half the recipe or you can keep. I was looking for the clip for my icing sugar, which I've put somewhere. Ah. Um, you can. Uh, Freeze it or keep it in the fridge as well. So just get rid of that because it gets everywhere. Oh, wow. The cake looks me Apparently it's only got 10 minutes to go. <laughs> right. So before I add the coffee into here, I'm just going to dip this one last mix through as it is to get that cream in and that last icing sugar. And then we'll do our last bit with our um, 
coffee. So pop it on and off it goes. And so like I said, for the first thing, we're going to be using a coffee extract, but you can use one tablespoon of instant coffee mixed with a little bit, maybe a teaspoon of water or two teaspoons just to make a thick paste. And when you're doing that, make sure you get all the coffee granules dissolved in. If they're not, then you'll get like, they won't cook out when you're baking and they definitely won't disintegrate in the frosting. Um, and then you end up with those bitter sort of grittiness. So make sure it's really well um, sort of mixed through. You can also use, if you've got them, those little cappuccino um, instant coffee pouches. So you could replace the coffee uh, or the coffee ex the, the instant coffee or the coffee extract with those as well. And maybe it just helps give you that sweetness. So I'm just whisking this to the last bit. Hey, look at this. I love buttercream frosting and the cake smells amazing and it just... It's, it's really puffed up. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that this morning. Oh, dear. All right. So we are just going to then finish off. That's all mixed through. This is our buttercream as it is. So it's really nice and pale. And let's see. I'm using the coffee extract or you can get coffee essence or like the camp, the hickory camp coffee. Uh, this is the Nielsen Massey Whew, coffee extract. You could use... Um, like a cold brew or something like that, but you want to make sure you get that really strong hit. Cappuccino is um, steamed frothy milk with the shot of espresso. So you could use, and what I have done in the past, use a shot of espresso, like from the Nespresso machines. Just make sure it's cooled down before you add it in. Or you could use, um, instead of the instant coffee powder, you could use instant espresso powder as well. And that gives sort of uh, quite... Uh, a more intense flavor but we're using the extract here and i'm going to start off with one teaspoon i think that's probably all i'm going to need but i'm gonna we're gonna give it a little taste test i think and see oh look it smells so good. It really smells really good. I might put, I'm going to give it a taste test. Because I'm, but I might, I'm just thinking, I've got a little bit on my finger. I'm going to give it another teaspoon of the extract. And that should be enough. If you're using instant, a good tablespoon uh, mixed up into the um, into the paste would be perfect. So we've only used two tablespoons mixed into that cake. Can you see it? It's, it's like this. It will, when it cools down, it will shrink back. But that has really popped up. I can't wait to get into that. <laughs> I'm hoping it won't get too dense though when it it, put, it it puffs and goes back. So I'm just gonna scrape everything off. Ian has just come back from his bike ride, so he'll be getting the beater. It's just, oh, I've got anything but coffee. It's like coffee cups. You get coffee rings everywhere. I'm, so I've put two teaspoons of the coffee extract into here. You can use a tablespoon of instant coffee um, made into a paste. You could use a shot of espresso. Mm. That has... Is you get the nice creaminess, you get the, the cream through there, the butter, 
and then you get the the coffee starts to come through and then it comes through a little bit more a little bit of that coffee warmth and you've got that that's good <laughs> even if i do say so myself i'm gonna have to just oh louise if it wasn't going on a cake i'd probably eat the lot by now mm. that's a good buttercream <laughs> You'll have to make it yourself to try it, but it, that's a good bus cream. So this is our cappuccino bus cream, which has got everything in it. So I'm just going to wipe over that coffee ring and then we'll have a quick run down so I can leave you guys to your Sunday mornings um, and maybe try it out. So you've got all the ingredients here if you want to give it a go this morning or the um, equipment list, and we will run through that now just so um you've got that now i've popped I've, I've obviously the cake is still in the oven so i'm not going to be doing anything with the buttercream i'm just going to keep this at room temperature until i'm ready to use it which will be later on this morning i don't want to use it now i've got coffee rings off this bottle everywhere <laughs> If I was making it well ahead, I would be making it sort of and then popping it in the fridge and then bring it up to room temperature. But because by the time that's out and it's cooled down, I don't want to be going through all that faff. I'm just going to leave that on the work surface until it's ready. So that's it. That has actually got two minutes. So we'll give it a, a prod in a minute. It's, it's, I think you can see it, but it's, it's, it's like this. It's gone... It'll be that really fine new um, flower I've got. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, we'll just have our quick recap and then I'm going to let you guys go and uh, give it a go yourself. So this morning uh, we have made our deliciously easy uh, coffee a tray bake with a cappuccino frosting, buttercream frosting that you've just seen me make. This is made in a 13 by 9 tray bake pan and it's going to serve, depending on how big you cut those slices, about 18 to 24 portions. It's a classic cake, coffee and walnut, but we've left out the walnuts on this because obviously I have a nut allergy. If you want to add walnuts in, what you do is just find, um, chop them up and add them in at the end of uh, the, the cake batter mix there. But we've done a reverse creaming method. So we started with our dry ingredients and then have slowly added in our wets with our fats, with our butter, then our, our additional fats with the yogurt and then up to our eggs. So we've got that really nice sort of soft, moist, fluffy texture. But with doing the reverse creaming method, it helps distribute the fats all over those gluten molecules, which really helps it all stay together really nicely. So as a tray bake, because it's just one layer, it's not going to crumble or anything when we cut into it. It is really quick and easy. And again, it's one you probably do with the kids because they can add stuff in and they can mix stuff. There's, there's nothing really sort of scary. And I say, are really lovely, smooth. And you've just seen me try it and creamy. It's so good. <laughs> Cappuccino buttercream frosting. So that's everything. In terms of ingredients, if you do want to make this today or before I get the post up, I promise I am working through them. Let's just take a look at this before we get any further. <laughs> that still needs to cook. So that's, I'm not even going to pop a uh, um, a toothpick in there because I can still feel it quite soft. So another five minutes. <laughs> so when I tried that, it was still a little bit, um, a little bit sort of soft on the top. You know, I said about trying the sponge test. If it indents and it pops up, it's good. Gina says, "Oops, my mouse isn't working." I go pop that up here. You can smell it from here. I can smell it here as well. And it smells amazing. And I desperately want to get stuck into it. But I am trying to be really good because there's a lot coming up that I need to make and bake. And I'm trying to be good. But it smells so good. Um, and it's really, really puffy. It's just like this. It will shrink back down. 
Anyway, I'm going to give you a run through of these ingredients in case you want to give it a go today or in the week. I am, promise you, working through about 20 recipes I need to write up. Um, it's just manic. And I realize that we you know we're now in September and we're going through and we've got all of this sort of stuff we've got to do for autumn and Christmas and Halloween. And I said the C word again. Um, there is a lot coming up. I've got a list here of the, the C word recipes that we are um, we're, we're, we're making this year as well. But back to our coffee cake. If you want to give this a go, this, these are the ingredients that you need. We've got self-raising flour there. You can use plain flour and add baking powder as well. Um, and I'll pop those conversions in the comments. We're using 350 grams of self-raising flour. We've added a little bit of extra baking powder, which is probably why it's puffed up. Um, it doesn't normally puff up like that, though. Uh, we've used a light brown sugar. Now, I also, as I said, as we're going through, have made a mix of light brown and caster sugar just because I wanted to have a slightly not so moist texture. The, the brown sugar is really hygroscopic and it really holds the, the moisture in. So I've used 200 grams of light brown and 100 grams of caster sugar, but you can use either, um, all cast, you, you could uh, use all caster sugar if you wanted to, or all light brown sugar, but I like the flavor the brown sugar brings to it. We've then used 250 grams of unsalted butter. And again, that was at room temperature, a bit like when we were doing the buttercream, just because it's easier to mix in. Now, you'll notice we haven't got the same amount of butter as our flour or our sugar like we would normally have. That's because we're using additional, uh, different sort of fat in there with the natural yogurt. And that just helps keep it really, again, we're baking a large sheet cake. It's going to dry out quicker because it's not as deep. So we uh, add extra different things in there, different techniques like the reverse technique uh, to, to keep it moist. And that natural yogurt is going to do that. If you don't have natural yogurt or you don't want to use natural yogurt, you can use sour cream as instead, not as well, instead. <laughs> Then we've used two tablespoons of instant coffee, like I was just explaining, and that's mixed with a little bit of water to make a paste, and then four eggs. Again, room temperature, and they're medium ones. For our buttercream, then, we had 200 grams of unsalted butter, plus the 400 grams of the icing sugar, and then I use the coffee extract, but you can use instant coffee as well. And lastly, I meant to miss it off when I was doing the ingredients list. We had 100 mils of double or heavy cream because I went to the fridge and it had all disappeared. Somebody's eaten it. Uh, <laughs> I've used clotted cream instead, which, you know, if you can use as well, it's, it gives that richness through. Um, so that's it. Equipment wise. That is a 13 by 9 tray bake. You can scale this down um, or scale it up. You could go into a deeper pan if you wanted to. Remember, you'll need to adjust your baking times. But this is going to give you a really nice big sheet pan for you to cut up and share and all get stuck into. Um, I use the KitchenAid, but you can use a handheld mixer and a large bowl, or you can use a balloon whisk and a lot of arm power if you're feeling that way. And then, you know, your ancillaries, if you need baking parchment, palette knives, spatulas, spoons, all sorts of bits and pieces like that. So that is what you need. So I guarantee you've probably got most of it in the cupboard or the fridge, uh, so you could crack on with it this afternoon if you wanted to. Um, this is still going it has it's gonna i'm gonna before i take off and tell you what we're doing next week this is gonna bing again in um, in about 10 seconds so we're gonna have a look at that if it's ready to come out if not i'll tell you how long i'm gonna pop that back in for uh and then i'll tell you what we're doing next week and i'll leave you to your sunday so let's have a look at this It's almost there. It's got that. It's less springy than it was before. So I'm just going to give that an extra. No, don't change the temperature, Louise. An extra five minutes. And I can guarantee you that will be ready to come out. So if you do find you need to give it a few moments, an extra five minutes, don't go ooh, ooh, 10 minutes. Because actually probably by 10 minutes time, you've overbaked it and everything. But that is... 
when I checked before, it was really soft and wasn't even springing back. There was no resistance to it. That now I can feel it. It's that it's, it's soft. There's some resistance there, but it's still not quite springing back up when I do that spring test. Another five minutes time and I'll know that it'll spring up and it'll be absolutely perfect. So that's that. So, right. Off to you for your Sundays. Next week we are going to be doing, I've, if you've been noticing, I've got a cupcake thing going on at the moment. We've had Jaffa cake ones. We've had lemon and white chocolate ones. And I've got a whole load of Oreos in the cupboard that I need to get rid of because otherwise I'm just going to sit and eat them. And I keep going after it. So we're going to be doing Oreo cupcakes next week. And we'll be doing the cake and the frosting, the buttercream frosting. And we're not... Emmy was saying around, oh, her, her piping wasn't the greatest. We're going to just be smothering it on next week because that's what it's all about. Uh, so that's it. So thanks for watching back here, 10 o'clock next Sunday, 12th of September. And thank you, Gina. Oh, look, I love her. It got, it was down here and I, it was just too hot and I needed. So I said to the hairdresser, take it off. And she said, how much? And I said, I want to go up to here. And she said, do you mind if I just, I went, no, off you go. And it all stayed on the floor <laughs> and the gray has gone and I'm loving it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely Sunday. If you're back to school this week, good luck. If you were back to school last week, Welcome to the downhill slog to laughter. <laughs> and I will see you all again next week. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.